Hey guys, how's it going? This is Siri, and I'm back with another PyTorch video. And, um, actually this topic that we're going to be talking about is actually applicable to other libraries as well. And the one that comes to my mind is NumPy. And, yep, you guessed it, we're going to be talking about broadcasting today, as you can see right here in the title. Um... Okay, so we're going to be talking about what broadcasting is and how we do it. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so what is broadcasting? Okay, so yeah, what is broadcasting? Okay, so you know how we can apply like operations on numbers, right? So for example, if you have five, you can... Um, you can quote unquote operate on it, right? So, but when we operate on five, we're not just dealing with five. We have like, we can either deal with one or several more numbers. So let's just think, let's just um, stick with one. So we have two numbers that we're dealing with when we're um, um, operating on them. So we can apply arithmetic operations to both these numbers. So you can do five plus three, which is eight, five times three, which is 15. And you can do all sorts of arithmetic operations on um, these two numbers. Well, the same can be said with tensors. And tensors, again, are multi-dimensional arrays and they can, they're a great core data structure. So something that holds your data. Um, and it's a core data structure in deep learning, and it's a great data structure. It holds and represents and encodes all of the different types of data that you can find, and it encodes them into numbers, which we can then feed into our model. But we need to perform operations on them, right? We need to like take two tensors and um, perform some arithmetic operations. Um, so the most intuitive way that comes to mind is to do it element wise and so we have a tensor we have like um two comma three comma four right and you have um five comma six comma um five comma six comma seven okay so this is a is equal to okay let's import torch so we can deal with all the pytorch stuff that we need um, so import torch and um, so we'll convert these two Python lists into a tensor. So let's say that a is torch dot tensor and we pass in this. So now this is going to be a tensor and now we have B, which is equal to torch dot tensor and um, we have another tensor here. So if we print A, and we have another space, oh god, <laughs> another space in between. Okay, so we have a space in between, and let's print these two tensors, okay? So we're importing torch. Okay, so we have two tensors, two, three, four, and five, six, seven. And the most natural way to add these, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. These are all different operations, right? Arithmetic operations. Um, okay, let me remind you again. Broadcasting allows you to um, um, perform arithmetic operations on tensors with different shapes. Okay, let's not deal with the different shapes part for now because A and B both have the same shape. And as I was saying, the most natural way to add these two tensors um, is element-wise. That's how most things work out, right? So we add the corresponding elements of both these tensors. That's the most intuitive, the most natural way to look at this addition um, problem, right? So we have 2 plus 3, 7, 9, and 4 plus 7 is 11. So we're expecting to get 7, 9, 11, okay? And let's check it out. Print A plus B, and that's what we get, 7, 9, and 11, okay? So... 
um, yeah, that's Element Wives, and it worked out because we had the same shape. We ha it was, let's check out the shape. Let's print out the shape. Shape just refers to the dimensions, right? So, let's print out the shape of both these tensors. Okay, they're both of size 3. They're three elements, okay? So these are three elements and they're the same shape. But, now that you know how easy it is to perform arithmetic operations on um, tensors with the same shape, and if you wanted to, you can do B minus A, so 3, 3, 3, right? 5, comma, five minus 2, 6 minus 3, 7 minus 4, they all are 3. Okay, so now that you know how to perform arithmetic operations on um, tensors with the same shape, okay, it's intuitive, how do we do it with different shapes? How does that work out? We're not going to have corresponding terms because they're of different shape. You can't have a um, corresponding term for each. You can't have a corresponding element for each element. Um, and Since you can't have a corresponding element for each element, you're not going to be able to do the same sort of technique slash procedure that we just did. So how do we do that? Well, broadcasting comes into play. So there are three different rules for broadcasting. Okay, so, um, so let's... The point of broadcasting first is to change the shape of these two existing tensors so you can now perform the same operations that we did. So we can perform the same intuitive thing that we did. Okay? We want to be there. We want to be in that happy place where we can just add corresponding elements. Okay? But we're not there yet since like, especially if we're given tensors with different shapes. Okay, so let's just take a tensor. Let's take tensor 1 is equal to um, the same tensor. Actually, not the same tensor, but like 1, 2, 3. Okay. And it's torch.tensor. Okay. Okay, actually I was right. Okay, so this is gonna be like a one by three tensor. Okay, so we have tensor two is torch dot tensor. And that's how you, um, that's how you create tensors. You use this um, torch dot tensor. Okay, just in case um, we missed that point here. Or in my previous video, I don't recall. Okay, so now we're going to have a tensor with different shapes. And by the way, it's a multidimensional array. So this array has one array inside it. Okay, this array has three. So we're going to have three different um, like sets of brackets with one element in each of them. Okay? So... So that's tensor 1 and tensor 2, and let's print out the shapes of each of them, okay? So tensor 1 dot shape print tensor 2 dot shape, okay? This is 1 by 3, and you see why? 1 is always the rows, always the number of rows, and we only have one row, okay? If we, like, stack it like this, if this is the way you're most comfortable with, and this is the way you can actually visualize what's going on. Um, we can do the same thing here, except actually we can't because it's just one row. So each bracket is a row, and um, each um, of the elements inside it are different columns. So for example, if we, I'm going to delete this later because, okay. Um, so 9, maybe, and 11, or 22, okay. So, you see, 
these are we have two columns now you see one column and two column and we have three different rows here okay so that's that's what we're heading at that's where we're heading okay okay so let's just put it back on same okay so once again the point of broadcasting is so that you can change these dimensions so that we can go back to that nice um corresponding um we can go back to that nice arithmetic operation where we can just uh, operate on these two consecutive not consecutive corresponding um terms okay so how do we okay but not all tensors are going to be broadcastable to each other. So not all of them are going to be broadcastable. And so there's a test to check whether we can actually do that. Can we actually trans like turn this tensor into can we turn both of these tensors into tensors that can actually um add their corresponding numbers um or divide or multiply? Can we actually turn both of these tensors into tensors like this where the shape is the same? Is that possible? Well, there's a test that, like, if we pass that test, it will tell us that um, we can, in fact, turn these tensors into tensors that are compatible with each other. Okay, so let's take a look at this test. Okay, so first, um, number one. Okay, so let's take a look at the shape of these two tensors. Okay, we start at the last dimensions, okay, so which are the three and the one. It's the last ones, right? So if you like take a list, um, and if it was longer, you would start at the last element in the shape, so the last dimension. So the last dimensions here are three and one. So we start at the last and we work our way backward. Okay, and we're checking to see if each of the tensor's dimensions are compatible with each other. Okay, and to see if the whole tensors are compatible with each other so we can perform these operations, we're going to have to check for each dimension. And we start um, from the back and we, go, we make our way forward. Okay. We, we make our way forward, which is the same as working backwards. Um, don't want, I don't want that to be confusing, but we we'll start at the back and slowly move towards the front. Okay. So back to our example. Um... So we have the shapes. Okay, let's write down the test at the end. Um, let's just go through an example and see. You know, it'll make more sense. I promise. Okay, so we have one comma three, and we have the second tensor, which is three comma one. Right? We printed the shape, so that's the shape. Okay, and the dimensions are compatible if a they are equal to each other, they're not, or B, if one of them is one. We got lucky here. Um, one of them is one. Okay. So we start with the last dimensions of tensor one and tensor two. This is tensor one, this is tensor two. Are they equal to each other? They're not, but one of them is one. So let's write that down. So if A, um, um, they are equal to each other, or B, um, one of the dimensions is one, okay? And we're only focusing on operations between two tensors at this point right because if we if we have um, multiple tensors it all boils down to you know it all boils down to two tensors so for example if we have like a string of um numbers that we're adding so we have in our case multiple tensors let's just go back to numbers so if we have multiple numbers like five plus three plus four plus nine plus 16 plus two plus four plus whatever right we have so many you, you, we don't have a test for to check for all of them, right? You just start at two and then make our way forward. Like we start 
at 5 plus 3, 8, okay, add 4 more, okay, 12, okay, and then add, like, 2 more, okay, 14, and so you, you start, always have two that we're looking at at once, we don't look at all of them at the same time, okay, so that's the first part of the test, and we passed, let's go on to the next dimensions, um, 1 and 3, same story here, okay, but if they were not compatible, if this was 4, Okay, if this was four, it would not be compatible, and we would just stop there because there's no use. It's useless. Like if even if even if the next ones, if the next dimensions were, it wouldn't matter because, like the, unless this is unless it's true for each dimension, it's not going to be true for the whole tensor. And so, um, yeah. Okay, so the arithmetic would be impossible. It wouldn't work. What's the shape of the resulting tensor? Okay, actually, there's only one part. So what, what's the shape of the resulting tensor? Well, we look at the maximum number for each dimension. Okay, let's change this back to one because that's what it is. Um, what's the maximum number for this dimension? It's three. Okay. So if it's 3, okay, so let's just pretend that it's x comma y. We don't know the outcome. We don't know the um, output shape um, of the resulting tensor. So, But we do know that the max for this is 3, and we know the max for this one is also 3. So the, re the shape of the resulting tensor, once we add these two, or do whatever operation we want, um, we're going to get a tensor of shape three comma three. So three columns, I mean three rows and three columns. Okay. And once we go beyond like three and we go on to like four, five, six, seven, we're not gonna be able to say like rows and columns, right? We're just gonna say, oh, this is dimension zero, one, two, three. We'll be referring to them um, using indices instead of, you know, hey, th these are the rows, these are the columns. Okay, just a fun note. Okay, so what does that mean? The whole point was to make these two tensors the same shape so that we can add them in this nice format. So can we do that now? Yes, we can. How do we do that? Okay, let's go back to how. Okay, so now the two original tensors need to change their shape um, to three by three in order to do this element wise operation that we're talking about. Okay, so let's copy the values until it reaches the desired output. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Okay, so for example, we have, um, we have this tensor, right? One comma two comma three. Let's copy that. Um, and so one comma two comma three right this is this is one list or one array within this array and we need it to be three comma three so this is going to be turning into um so now this is just like one by three one array one row inside this whole thing so now we need three of them so let's copy it one comma two comma three let's make another list one comma two comma three Let's make another list, one comma two comma three, and we oh, and we did this three times because the outcome, I mean the resulting shape is three comma three, okay, three by three. Okay, so that's the way we would reshape this, okay. And what was the other tensor? What was tensor B or tensor two? It was this, right? So what's the shape of this one? Um. The shape of this one is you have three of these, three, but it's still one row. I mean, it's three rows, but it's still one column, right? Because if you look at it like this, it's three rows, but there's only one column. You need two other rows here. So why don't we make, why don't we do it like this? Okay, wait. So now tensor B, it's going to change into... Um, four, okay, comma four, comma four. So now we added two more columns, okay? 
that's what we did here right now. So now we have five comma five comma five. And we have six comma six comma six. Okay, so does that make sense now that we're just copying the values? Okay, let me just write that down. It's nothing more complicated than that. We're just copying the values so that the shape is the same as the resulting tensor. Okay, so how do we expect this to add then? Let's copy our tensor. So now, now it should look the same. Okay, so now it has the same shape, you see? Like this three by three. It's working out nicely. So this one, two, three by three. Three rows, three columns. So what's what do we expect? Well, now that we can do this element-wise, we can expect something element-wise. So now we can easily expect it because the only thing we're doing is just adding the values together adding the corresponding values. So adding, um, and by corresponding, I just mean like it has the same index. Okay, so the zeroth index of the zeroth, I mean, it's the zeroth um, row and the zeroth column. So the index would be like, like two brackets and zero and zero. And you know what corresponding means, right? Like it's just, um, yeah, it's the same spot in the array. And now that it's the same shape, we do have corresponding. Because for example, if we have like seven comma seven comma seven, there's nothing there's nothing in this array that would be um, there's nothing in this tensor that would correspond to this seven comma seven comma seven. So it needs to be the same shape. Now you can see why. Okay, so we add the ones, the twos and the threes, so we get um, five comma six comma seven, right? One plus four, two plus four, three plus four. And one plus five, two plus five, three plus five is um, six, seven, and eight. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, and the last one is seven, comma, eight, comma, nine. So you see the sort of symmetry going on here. Okay, so that's what we expect. Expected tensor. Okay, let's check it out. Let's um, add A and B together. A plus B. Did we add A and B? No, we added A and B for the... Okay, we didn't assign... Okay, so these are tensor 1 and tensor 2. Forgive me if I said um, A and B. Okay, I'm talking about tensors 1 and 2. Okay, so so tensor one plus tensor two. What is that going to be now? Well, it's going to be our expected tensor, All right? So five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so you see what's going on here. Um, we just had to make the two shapes equal to each other, um, and there's also a test to see if that was even possible. So these were the two. It's it's or it's either or right um so this or that it doesn't need to be and because that's not possible otherwise it would just be one comma one um but yeah okay um another example is multiplication if you wanted to do that um so if you had a equal to one comma two comma three and we have b is just a scalar value nine what's a times b um so you see wait, wait one two three four five six seven eight nine so it literally copy pasted it nine times so um yeah that's what's going on here and yeah, so, I mean, wait, actually, if this was, these are just torch.tensor, wait a sec. That's if it was Python, tensor. Yeah, that's it, yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, um, so that's if it was a Python list. Um, because that's all it knows, right? It, the only thing it knows is concatenation. It doesn't do any of this element-wise thing. So, any of these things. So, we're going to need, like, some sort of scientific computing thing that's, that actually allows you to do it element-wise. So, NumPy and PyTorts are great for these because they're actually tailored towards scientific computing, which is what makes it so great for deep learning. And so, okay, so you see this, um, nine, it gets distributed toward, um, to each of these elements. So it does it element wise. Okay. And you can basically think of it as doing the same thing here. It's not any different, right? These are both tensors. And what this just did is that it converted it to the same size as this. And that's how it was able to, um, do it. So this was one by three. Let's take a look. Okay, wait, a dot shape. It's one by three. One comma three, and what's b dot shape? You can probably guess this, but <laughs> it's not any shape. Okay, so um yeah, so you would just fill in a one if they're not um there. So if they're different dimensions and um like one's a lower dimension and it doesn't, it's not there, you would just substitute a one into that. So that's how it works. So, um, even if you had another, even if you had like, like, um, nine comma seven comma two, and if you had like seven comma five, you would, in order to check, you would, um, actually add in a one here. So now you can make some comparisons between the two different um, tensors and their shapes. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. So let's just type that. So add a one for the lower dimensional tensor. Um, if there isn't a value, um, associated with the higher dimensions. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have deleted that, right? So if you had eight, seven, six, and five comma four, just add a one in the last dimension to make proper comparison. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, just substitute one for the mentioning dimension. Um, and yeah, if it doesn't satisfy the requirements that we've mentioned here, then they can't be broadcastable. They're not broadcastable and you can't perform broadcasting on this. Okay. So they need to satisfy this, these two conditions. I mean, not these two, either or, once again. Okay, so this is the test for broadcasting, and the actual thing you do is find the max value. Find the max value for each dimension, um, starting from the last dimension. And each of those max values are going to be the dimensions for your resulting tensor. Okay? Um, yeah, so, so that's the rule. Um, if you want to broadcast it, if it's broadcastable, and this is the test you would use. And we did um, a few examples. Okay, so I hope you learned something. I hope this cleared up the confusion about like how on earth you actually add two different tensors with different shapes. Um, it all boils down to making them the same shape so you can do this nice intuitive element wise operation that, or like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Okay, um, I hope you learned something new today 
and yeah i'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video until then take care thank you so much